Sonic, the heart of your system. Hey guys, Bowman's here from Kit Guru, and in today's YouTube video, I'll be showing you guys the new Razer Basilisk Essential mouse. This mouse is one of the newest expansions to the mouse family. Razer's previous mouse, known as the Basilisk, sold so well that Razer decided to make a more affordable version of that mouse. It only has an RRP of $49.99, but does it have the features, or at least a lot of the features that the Basilisk had? And is it going to be worth getting as an affordable budgeted option? Let's go and have a look. Whilst unboxing the Razer Basilisk Essential Mouse, you see that the packaging has retained its iconic green and black colour scheme, displaying the product on the front of the box and more information and specifications about it on the rear. Opening the product up, you will find a really cute Razer logo sticker and you will also find the Razer Basilisk Quick Start Guide, which has a greeting message on the inside and all of the information needed on how to set the mouse up and use a Razer sign up software to configure the different settings of the mouse. I'll go into more detail about all of this later on in the video. You also receive the Basilisk's single length multifunction paddle. Now looking at the mouse, it has a smooth black overall design and has the gripped texture where the thumb rest is and also at the right hand side of the mouse too. It also has seven programmable hyper response mouse buttons, four on the top of the mouse and three at the left hand side of the mouse. And finally an optical sensor located at the bottom of the mouse. The mouse features a lovely flexible 1.8 meter braided cable and has a type A USB connector representing the razor color by having the green on the inside of it and also displaying the razor name on the connector too. Having a look at the additional single length multifunction paddle for the Basilisk Essential, you can see that it has its own separate packaging and is held in place under a lip on the card. This is to ensure that it doesn't move around or get lost or forgotten about when the mouse is first opened. The paddle has a specific way of fitting into the mouse and this slot is located on the left side of the mouse underneath a rubber flap and is magnetised making it easy to snap into place once the paddle has been lined up correctly. Once this is in place your Razer Basilisk is now fully ready to use. There are a couple of things I actually really enjoyed about the way Razer packaged their product. So actually on the back of the box, instead of it just being like this boring plastic sticker that seals your product, this one has just got a really nice tear tab and it actually gets into the product without ruining the product's box at all. So I just thought that was a nice quirky little feature that Razer have on their packaging to be honest. And also as well, the fact that they actually include a sticker. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but it's just something additional that customers will get when they buy the peripherals that Razer sell. And I really do enjoy just these little things, to be honest. These little things make all the difference, in my opinion. So I felt that the mouse's design was really good as well, and it is a lot lighter now with the Basilisk Essential than the previous Basilisk, weighing at only 95 grams without the cable, where the Basilisk actually weighed 107 grams. So the dimensions of this mouse are 124 millimeters in length, 75 millimeters in width, and 43 millimeters in height. So it still kind of retains the exact same shape as the previous Basilisk. It still has the same positioning of the thumb rest on the mouse as well, which I found to be really comfortable. Generally using the mouse and just the way it felt was really nice to actually use. My only downside of the mouse in the way it's kind of designed was just the ergonomics of it. So on the right hand side of the mouse, I found that it was a little bit too steep. Like there was a cutoff point too soon on the mouse. So when I was actually using it in a comfortable position, my little finger would kind of like hang off and drag slightly against the mouse pad only very slightly but in order for me to have a comfortable hand position on the mouse unfortunately this did happen another one of the things I did find using it as well was with the single length multifunction paddle that comes with the mouse I found that because I have quite small hands I felt that I had to overstretch whilst trying to use that paddle. Like I would just have to pull my hand out of a more comfortable position and put it into kind of like an awkward one and then go back into that position. I don't know whether that's just because I have quite small hands, but I feel that this mouse would benefit more from slightly bigger hands, I guess. When it came to using the left and right mouse buttons on the Basilisk Essential, I did find that they were a little bit heavier than that of the mice that I'm currently used to. I found that they were a bit more tactile. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it just means that when you go and actuate the left and right mouse clicks, 
They just require that little bit more effort, that's all. Overall, the Basilisk Essential does have a really nice look to it. It does have a really nice grip textured left side and right side. And generally it is very comfortable to use. I was using it a lot whilst I was working, whilst I was playing games. And I found it like, it was really easy to kind of just get the hang of using a different mouse. I thought it was gonna be quite a lot harder going from one mouse to another. But this one, I felt right into it. Now is the part of the video where I will show you guys on how to actually use the software that Razer provide. This software is called the Razer Synapse and it will allow you to customise the mouse in all the ways that you want. Lighting effects, DPI controls, macro controls, remapping, programmable stuff, so much stuff to actually go ahead and customise with this mouse which is awesome. So let's go ahead and show you what the software looks like and I'll tell you how it works. You can download the Razer Synapse software from the software tab on the Razer website. Once downloaded, it will give you various options of what you would like to install with the Synapse software. You can choose to install all of these modules or just the specific modules. Once your chosen modules have been installed, you will see them all listed as well as your current connected Razer devices. Select your Basilisk Essential mouse and you are brought to a page where you can assign the seven programmable buttons to do something different instead of just having the default settings. There is a list of different functions that these buttons can perform on the left hand side of the software, giving you complete freedom to choose your preferred overall mouse functions and its layouts. When adjusting the Razer Basilisk Essential settings, you have four tabs, Customize, Performance, Lighting, and Calibration. Now we've had a look at the Customize option, now onto the Performance side of the mouse. This is where you will find the Sensitivity, Polling Rate, and the Windows General Mouse Properties. With the Mouse Sensitivity, you can increase or decrease the DPI of the mouse with 100 DPI steps. Here, you can also adjust the number of stages you want the mouse to have in total, and the specific DPI number of each stage. You can choose to have one specific DPI setting for the mouse by disabling the Sensitivity Stages option, or you can have the Sensitivity Stages active, allowing you to make use of the DPI switch button on the top of the mouse. Next, we move on to the lighting options for the Razer Basilisk Essential. In this tab, you can adjust the RGB zone brightness and also have the additional options to switch off the lighting when the display is either turned off or has been idle for the chosen amount of minutes. Finally, in this section is where you will have all of your fun when it comes to customising your peripheral. With a range of 16.8 million different colour options to choose from, you are sure to find your preferred lighting effects. The software offers either the four quick preset effect options where you can choose a colour for them or if you want to be a bit more creative and have a more personalised experience, this is where the Chroma Studio module comes into play. Within the Chroma Studio module, you have the ability to have complete control over how your RGB zone looks and get the most out of your Chroma devices from having different effect layers active to choosing what speed you want your effects to play at. When it comes to Chroma devices, you can also download pre-made community profiles from the Razer website. Finally, in the Razer Synapse software, you can calibrate your mouse to a variety of Razer's mousepad surfaces that they have available, making sure that your mouse responds to your movements fluidly when in use. When using the Razer Synapse software, I did find it was very easy to use. I loved the fact that I didn't have to install all of the modules because not everybody needs those modules installed. If you're someone that wants to actually just look at the lighting effects and just change all those settings that way, you're not forced to have something that you don't really want or need. I think when it comes to having a lot of Razer peripherals, it's gonna be a really benefiting thing for you when it comes to using the Chroma Studio, because that means you can link them all up to do all the same lighting effects. And if you can't decide on what lighting effect you want to create, or if you just can't be bothered creating one, there are preset ones that the community have made. So you go on their website, and if someone has made an incredible looking one and you just want it, you can download it and put it on your Razer software, which is really cool, I like that. And I love the fact that when it came to actually changing the DPI on the mouse, 
it popped up in the bottom right hand of the screen telling you which DPI was active. Not a lot of mice do that and I find it's a shame when it comes to having DPI switches because sometimes when you press it it doesn't always actually tell you what DPI you have active so having it pop up in the bottom right hand screen for the Basilisk Essential is essential because you're going to need to know which DPI you have active especially when you're playing first person shooter games you don't have time to try and figure out which DPI you have active you want to know exactly which one you do one of the things I did kind of find a little bit of a downside when it came to using the Razer sign up software was just the calibration tab so when going into the calibration options you do have the option to pick one of the various Razer mouse pads to calibrate your mouse to. Now unfortunately not everyone has the luxury of owning a Razer mouse pad or generally having a lot of Razer peripherals so I don't know whether that would just make people think oh because I don't have one of these mouse pads can I not calibrate my mouse or oh, I don't know which one to choose because I don't know the thickness of this or just all of that. I feel that having the kind of Razer listed mouse pads only and only really being able to calibrate with those. You literally just have to stick with default. When it came to testing the Razer Basilisk Essentials liftoff distance, I did this by using two discs to check out how low or high it was. I did find that the mouse could still work perfectly with the thickness of two discs, therefore making the liftoff distance quite high overall. And unfortunately this mouse has no option to change this in any of the options. Other than that, I found that the acceleration of the mouse and the overall response of mouse movements and button presses was very precise and accurate. So guys, overall I do think that the Razer Basilisk Essential mouse is a great addition to Razer's family. At $49.99 it is affordable for gamers and it still has a lot of the features that the Basilisk currently has. It's very comfortable and to be honest it's very good to use overall. I do enjoy a lot of the features that it has, I like the customization size of things and I do love the way it feels when I'm using it. And like I said the only downside I did actually find when it came to it was just the overstretching of my thumb to actually go ahead and reach that paddle and that's just because I have small hands so I'm sure if you guys who have larger hands than me you'll find it completely comfortable and also having the ergonomic side of things as well when it comes to me holding the mouse having my little finger kind of hang off and drag against the mouse pad again I do have small hands so if that's happening on my hands I would assume that for someone with larger hands it's going to hang off quite a lot more but if you're someone that can completely deal with that and it doesn't bother you in any way at all and obviously you do have larger hands to reach that paddle button this mouse is going to be awesome for you especially if you are wanting a budget option thank you so much guys for watching the review video if you did like it please make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also as well, we do have a Patreon page. So if you want to help support us, the Kit Guru team, you're more than welcome to. The link will be in the description below. If you do want to go ahead and support us, you will get access to the videos before they actually release on YouTube. So that's a really cool thing to have. Thank you so much, guys. Have an awesome day and I'll see you for the next video. Goodbye.